Amazon deployed an army of so-called ambassadors on social media, specifically on Twitter back in 2018. And the whole point was to defend the company and clap back against progressive lawmakers like Senator Bernie Sanders. Now, they had this whole program and they even titled it Veritas. Mm -hmm. Ken Klippenstein reports in The Intercept that anticipating criticisms of worker conditions at their fulfillment centers in particular, Amazon designed Veritas to train fulfillment center workers chosen for their great sense of humor mm. to confront critics, including policymakers, on Twitter in a blunt manner. Okay, and we do have some examples of um, the types of tweets they put out there. Uh, but the reason why we know about this is because someone uh, from Amazon leaked this document to Ken Klippenstein, and um, the document produced as part of the uh, pilot program in 2018 and marked Amazon.com confidential also includes examples of how its ambassadors can snarkily respond to criticisms of the company and its CEO. Several examples involve Bernie, a longtime critic of the $1 trillion firm who has been targeted by it in recent days. It also provides examples of how to defend Bezos. And before we get to all of that, I do want to open it up to you, Nando, because as you know, as Bessemer Alabama warehouse workers have been trying to unionize, Amazon has used all sorts of tactics to discourage them from doing so. So this really isn't that surprising. I mean, yeah, well, first of all, big ups to Ken Klippenstein, probably our nation's finest investigative reporter. I mean, like in terms of volume of scoops, like actual meaningful scoops, there's few reporters who, who generate more. Yeah, um, yeah more scoops than Baskin Robbins, for sure. Oh, so, hey. <laughs> 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 oh man, more scoops than than his brother, uh, the Krasensteins. Uh, the the um, I I I find this story to be both hilarious and also weirdly dystopian. In that, who does anyone is anyone swayed by any of this? Like, is anyone gonna be like read the tweets from like you know Jenny at Amazon FC, who's like, you know what, I love packaging packages all day, and it's my favorite thing in the world to do, and we get great breaks. You know, it's like the the terrorist uh, uh, videos, like they're treating me very well here. Um, I, you know, and the the. The, the grimness of it though is that like they're using these kind of social channels and basically I'm assuming buying off like potential collaborators, you know, like like these 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 employees who are willingly like shilling for management in that sense. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. There's always gonna be a percentage of the population who is gonna be willing to scab or um, just absolutely be a turncoat. Against like their fellow uh, workers and 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 try to like I don't know ingratiate themselves with the bosses in a way that is like you know the worst kind of teacher's pet brown noser and like I wonder if there's because I I don't think it was in the Ken Klippenstein report whether they're being paid or not I know they were encouraged you know who knows mm-hmm. what like stupid benefits they they were given to do that like you know maybe they get like an extra five minutes uh, to go to the bathroom and do whatever their business is if they if they you know per tweet or something but um, yeah I mean that was what was kind of I, depressing about it because I, I assume they were bots and I'm sure some of them are bots but me like too. The, the fact yeah. that they're real people is more is more depressing than anything else right and and I would want to learn a little bit more about how this all came about, right? Like, were they approached by management over at Amazon? And if they were approached about doing this, did they really feel like they had a choice? Like, can you really? Like consent to being part of this because you could say no, but I mean, it's very clear that Amazon is punitive in so many different ways. I mean, Ken Klippenstein also reported recently about how Amazon drivers had such a heavy load of work to do on a daily basis. Like they had to package, not package, deliver a high quota of packages. And as a result, they felt like they couldn't even take a break to go to the bathroom. So many of them would defecate in bags in their cars or urinate in bottles. And so obviously, there's like, 
at least some culture of fear implemented because you don't want to lose your job, right? Um, especially in this economy where you know you have these massive companies like Amazon um, that are eating up all of these other smaller companies, you know, you really don't have much of a choice. And if you live in a small town um, and Amazon is your only employment option, I can see how the issue of consent can become a sticky one. But we don't know. We don't know how yeah. um, the recruiting process went down. Um, and you're right, there are certainly people um, who are willing to place their bets with sucking up to management as opposed to uh, unifying with their fellow workers. Um, but I do want to give you some examples of the interactions that the document mm. laid out, you know, just as like, hey, here's how you can respond, that type of thing. So, in one instance, the document refers to a video interview Sanders tweeted. Bernie Sanders interviewing Seth King on Prime Day. Seth describes feeling so depressed working at Amazon to take his uh, to take his own life, right? Like there's a worker who's considering suicide. <laughs> Um, an ambassador role playing then responds, Senator Sanders, this job has never made me feel badly, made me feel bad personally. If you have a job that makes you feel bad, you could leave. Oh yeah, so that's an example of a response. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just you could just you know live in destitute in, in destitute poverty and uh, starve to death rather than you know grind your bones to sawdust in our fulfillment centers. I mean that's a choice. That's your choice, man. I'm sorry, you, you chose it. I mean, this is this is Chicago school talking points, like libertarian yeah. libertarian nonsense, right? Like yes. the whole, oh no, you live in the greatest country in the world. You get to make, you get to decide your fate. You get to make your own decisions. Yeah, there's one company that you can really work at at this point because it's killed every other small business. Yeah. But you know, you can make decisions. Like, please. To give you more, um, at another point, Sanders is described as having tweeted about Jeff Bezos's wealth. The ambassador then replies, everyone should be able to enjoy the money they've earned slash saved. It's theirs, they should be able to do with it as they please. That includes Jeff Bezos. And I mean, there's a really great, in my opinion, like Marxist response to that, which is uh, who actually built the company, right? Um, who's actually uh, creating the wealth Who's generating the wealth for that company? Is it really Jeff Bezos or is it all of those warehouse workers, all of those drivers, all of the workers um, who are being even at $15 an hour underpaid um, relative to the revenue that Amazon brings in on a yearly basis, including during a global pandemic. So yeah. maybe let's have a discussion about that. So anyway, <sighs> I mean, it's frustrating. This yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when we zoom out in the big picture, though, this Bessemer, Alabama union drive, which, you know, has to, we hope, has to succeed because there hasn't been a private sector union drive like this that has gotten this much attention. In a long, 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 long time, especially like in in a working class industry. I know that the media has had several high profile kind of unionization drives, but that's in the media. Therefore, that's why it's covered by the media. But uh, this is like a you know squarely working class uh, union drive uh, in the deep south uh, in a small town, just exactly the place where it needs to happen for it to have any meaningful ripple effect. And if it if it does succeed, you can imagine. Uh, our politics changing pretty dramatically. If it gets defeated, it would be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It would be a tough pill to swallow, but I don't want to get, first of all, I don't want to get preemptively depressed. Um, no. Because there have already been some positive um, you know, benefits to this union yeah. drive. Um, it's it's galvanized workers across the country. Now you have workers not just at Amazon um, fulfillment centers, but in other companies, you know, uh, reaching out to uh, union leaders looking for um, a way to organize themselves, and that's that's a good sign. I think the one thing that I've noticed a change in is just like this growing awareness of of class. You know, I think that that conversation was really missing nationally and we're still like 
we're not there yet, like, but it's mm. growing. Like, people are yeah. starting to, to to really think of themselves um, not based on other identifiers, but more importantly through through class struggle. And really, when it comes to the material benefits of that, I really think it's important to have that focus um, mm. and 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 do so in an intersectional way, right? So, um, at the end of the day, this is this is a class war, um, and we're we're talking about people who are building wealth for these individuals who um, are psychopaths, really. I mean, to the point where if you see that your workers are overwhelmed and they have to defecate in bags as a result, maybe don't punish them, maybe rethink your business model a little bit. And maybe you bring in a little tiny bit less, little tiny bit less in profits. Um, But you're gonna be all right, dog, like you're gonna be okay. Uh, but that's not how capitalism works. That's certainly not how Jeff Bezos and executives at Amazon work. And so they're scared, they're terrified about this effort to unionize. Which brings me to the final uh, graphic that I wanna read to you guys. As Klippenstein reports, the document instructs employees not to respond to contacts about the right to unionize. One of the only three cases in which they're told not to respond, an example to ignore is provided. Amazon let your FC employees unionize if you have nothing else, nothing to hide. So um, if someone says that uh, to one of these <laughs> or tweets that, uh, the ambassadors are told just ignore it, do not respond to it. Mm. Don't draw any attention to that. So, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I lied, there is one more graphic because you tweeted yeah. it, and it was hilarious. So there are bots as well. And here's an example, Tim Sullivan tweeted this out. Someone with the handle OK4AT, Bert at OK4. That's an image of a guy, a personality from this YouTube channel called Dude Perfect. So mm-hmm. they just really didn't try with this one at all, as yeah. Tim Sullivan mentions. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's good, it's good, you love to see it, you love to see it. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.